how do you think for so far? Uh, I mean, I'm obviously beautiful. I mean, we, uh, we got in yesterday morning, uh, five in the morning, and uh, yeah, a little bit. It's hitting me hard today. Uh, uh, got to come around here to the Iron Orchard and um, kind of sightsee a little bit. We got to go to the, the Sky Bar. And, um, Where did you buy flying from? Uh, flew from Los Angeles. Oh, okay. yes, you hang over. Not hang over. You are just like some Not hang over. Yeah. <laughs> it's so different from LA, isn't it? Everything is just so compact here. Absolutely. Um, but, uh, but I think, and, and, and this has really been true. Uh, most most countries here in Asia that I've been able to visit is that everybody is extremely friendly, uh, very sociable, uh, which makes it a lot easier, I think, for somebody to come from halfway around the world, you know, to perform or, or, or do something in the public eye and have everybody just be so inviting and so gracious and so. It helps that you're David Cook as well. well <laughs> okay, I love your outfit today. Thank you. How long do you take to put it together? This took uh, Be 10 minutes. No. Oh, I Seriously? Where do you get this from? Uh, this is uh, Givenchy. And these, uh, this is uh, H&M. Did you get all this from, from Singapore? Uh, I did not get this from Singapore. Uh, but I did. Uh, we did get a chance yesterday to, to go out to a few shops. And um, I got some outfits from uh, CK Jeans. Oh, that's awesome. It's the most I've ever talked about fashion. <laughs> I love guys who know their fashion. Okay. All right, we have a lot of media who have flown in from around the region actually to be with us here today, and also from Singapore, some very notable media as well. We're going to be um, opening the floor to questions. So if y'all have any questions to ask, please raise up your hands and let me know which publication you're from, and we'll direct the question to David. Who wants to go first? All at once. It's going to be the easiest press conference. <laughs> throughout the rest of the year, um, still looking at the uh, 2015, uh, and doing a lot of writing uh, for another record. I um, actually just relocated to Nashville, Tennessee, that's where I call home now. Um, just kind of really trying to immerse myself in that creative uh, space, and it's, it's incredible. So I'm, uh, yeah, working on new music and uh, finding time to wear convention jackets. <laughs> Inspires you to write music. Do you ever get like writer's block and just go like, okay, I need a break? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what do you do then when you get a writer's block? Uh, anything but write. I, I think um, what I try, I, I, end up, I, I feel creative in spurts. So I'll have like a month or two where I'll write 15 songs or whatever. They may not look great, but I'll write 15 songs. And then uh, I just won't feel creative for a minute. That's when kind of go out and experience things and then you bring those experiences back into the creative process. What do you usually sing about? Right. <laughs> Taylor Swift, we know, right? Uh, so my ex-boyfriends. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it, it's... I, I mean, love is kind of a big permeating theme for most songwriters, whether it be requited or unrequited. Um, but really, it's, I don't know, I just... There's a whole range of emotions to write about, so I, I try to... Try to touch on as many of them as I can, but I think more often than not, it's uh, a it is a rough. Yeah, it's a rough. Is this like your personal diary? That um, everything is all very personal. Sometimes, yeah. I, I, you know, but again, I think it, it um, inspiration comes from anything. Like I've written probably my fair share of songs about ex-girlfriends and stuff like that. And, um, but you know, I've also in the past written songs based off like newspaper articles that I've read. Or, um, or a photo that I've seen. Or, um, so really, it's just, it's anything. I mean, we've got all these fantastic paintings hanging up in here. It's Asia, know, we there's all a song in here somewhere. Ah, uh, yes? I mean, really? Yeah. <laughs> I, wanna, I wanna get you to do something like that. that red frog. Right <laughs> okay, if you had a, like, a dream venue to do a concert at, where would it be? Wow. Anywhere. Um, Some people have done hot There's a lot of places I have to play, so. Um, well, yeah, we're about to launch, we're about to launch that one off the list, that would be good. Um, outer space, like being a star? Yeah, outer space. I actually, you know, that, that jump was incredible, I have to say that. So, um, 
I don't know. I mean, I've, I've never got to play a show uh, in, uh, in Europe. I would love to do that anywhere in Europe. Um, I, I've actually never been uh, to, to Japan or China. I've never been there. Um, there's Someone a taking notes? Yeah. <laughs> My team will work on it. Okay, that's, <laughs> at least I know you keep to your word. Exactly. exactly. Before we close the floor, would you, yes, where are you from? I'm putting from Sina Meset. Sina Meset, okay. Sure, hi. Yeah, you can a contestant on American Idol. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if given a chance, would you want to judge a reality scene contest? Uh, maybe. The longer answer to that question is, um, I would I would welcome the opportunity to judge a reality singing competition if we're under the right set of circumstances, and I and I say it in this context. Um, you can be a judge on a reality singing competition and make it about the judges, or you can be on a reality singing competition and make it about the contestants. I would not, I don't think, have any interest in making it about the judges. Uh, did you just bitch about them at all? I did not. <laughs> I just think, you know, there's... I mean, I'll use Idol's track record as an example. I think the seasons where the contestants have come off the show and done well have been seasons where it has been about the contestants. And it allows the audience to invest emotionally in those contestants and their stories. I think the seasons where I own and shows of that ilk have maybe not had as much success have been where there's turmoil and the show focuses on things other than the contestants. So um, I think in order for me to feel comfortable on a, in a judge's seat, it would have to be with, with that in mind. That, um, look, I've benefited immensely from having a panel of judges that really helped me as a contestant and as a performer. Um, and I, I, would, I don't think I'd have an interest in denying another potential candidate or a contestant that opportunity. Beautiful. So something like The Voice would consider to be when they get to mentor. Oh, I'm not, I'm not saying that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, another question? Yes, wait. Uh, Anthony from David Cook, Singapore Fan Club. Ooh, yeah. okay. uh, I'd like to ask, which which Singapore food do you like to try? We actually, uh, last night, went to dinner. Chili uh, crabs. I'm blanking on the name again. What was it? Long Beach. Long, Long Beach. Beach. And had a uh, sweet chili crab and the, the black pepper crab. I really like the black pepper crab. Yes! I really like that. <laughs> the, the sweet chili crab came late in the meal, and I think I may have already been full. So it wasn't, I think it was good, but it wasn't as good as the one. Yeah, I can tell you, black pepper has always been consistent. The chili crab, I think, is a bit overrated. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's the same for right? Oh, you're talking about right? this. <laughs> Maybe we get involved in that. Any other questions? Yes, one more. I'm like, um, If you could give your 18 year old self a piece of advice, what would you do? <laughs> Don't get weird haircuts, for starters. How oh, weird was it? Ah, uh, about right, 18? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, well, uh, well, no, because I was, we were talking about this last night. We were talking about um, the, uh, the idol experience, like the audition process. Uh, I had that unfortunate red and dark brown kind of faux hawk thing. I remember, because the way that it was set up is I auditioned and it didn't air for a couple of months. And so for two, two and a half months, I'm having panic attacks. I said, please God, just don't let me be a joke audition because that hair was terrible, so bad. Um, so yeah, I probably would have toned down the hair a little bit. <laughs> Yes. Hi, um, I'm Marietti from uh, creativedisc.com. All right, uh, you've been writing a few songs for the past few months. Mm -hmm. um, so are these songs, um, are these materials for your next album, or are they like, you know, are you writing for other people, or you know? A bit of both. Uh, a, and who? And who? Uh, I, I don't know that I'm at liberty right now to say who uh, for a myriad of reasons. Uh, but I can't say the stuff that, that you know, I, I, 
I think as you surround yourself with different things, um, in this case for me it was moving to Nashville. It definitely. Um, <laughs> it definitely um, brings new stimuli into the, into the songwriting, you know. So um, I, I think this stuff I'm writing now, and I've said this in other interviews, so I don't know that it's anything new. Um, I'm really trying to allow the melody to take over, uh, I think more so than I've had in the past. And so, um, and I know it's weird to say because any song has a melody, but um, I, I think song, songwriting in the sense of lyrics uh, and, and, and really just letting, uh, using a vocal as an instrument, let all those instruments have their own space as opposed to just bombarding you know, a song with like as many guitar tracks as possible. Um, and it's really, I, I think it's really taken me in a different direction a little bit. I know there's people back home that have expressed some various form of concern about me going country or something. Um, look, I, I, you know, I have no problem writing country music. Uh, I just, I, I, like I've said before, I think it's just that come up as disingenuous. So I, I don't think anybody should expect me to just completely abandoned what I was doing before, but I, I think progression, I think uh, allowing that sound to change and grow is uh, is always a good thing. Thank you. Wow, that was a Long great... Long-winded answer. <laughs> that was, that was pretty exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, hi, I'm Tahira from Rita Harian, Malay Fintech. So, I'm going to ask you so how would you define yourself as an artist, and uh, which song defines the most? Um, I'm going to give you the most honest answer I can give you to that question, which is probably a non-answer, and that is I do not have a definition for myself as an artist, because I feel, and this is the honest answer, I, I, I feel like if I define myself as an artist, then that's who I am, and that's not the kind of artist I want to be. Um, I like the idea of, of being um, an artist that can change and, and try new things and do different things. And, um, and so, I don't know. I, I, I don't know really the question. I don't know that I will. I'll always be trying to find this one. But, um, you know, I, I, people, I've had people kind of tell me, like, you need to be doing this, you need to be doing this. And, and for me, it's just I'm not really in charge of where this artistic process goes. It just kind of is going to go where it's going to go. Um, and whether or not I choose to embrace it, I guess it's the only choice I have. I, don't know. I can't wait to hear you do a Kesha like track. <laughs> Like something with dubstep on it. You might have to wait a while. <laughs> I will wait. Because <laughs> your is always watching. <laughs> One last question before we close the floor. Yes. Hi. Hi. Uh, I'm Sue I'm representing the Facebook fans of iModget. So um, the fans are actually asking, what is your favorite song to perform live? Uh, favorite song to perform live? That uh, it changes a lot. Um, and it depends on what kind of show we're playing, whether it be like an acoustic show like we're doing here, or a full band show, or a solo acoustic show, whatever. Um, this one's going to be a riot. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. No, it's, I, I think, um, I, I think the one I most consistently like playing uh, is uh, it's probably Paper Heart off the, off the side morning. Um, I don't really know why, other than it's just, I feel like that song is it's consistently easier for me to find my pocket in that song. Um, I, I think with a lot of the other songs, it, 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 you know, I believe in all these songs, but it's, uh, I think the amount of audience interaction you get, or whether it sounds right on stage, is, there's so many kind of competing variables that kind of dictate what songs go over well on a particular night. So we're going to 